Number nine then from the 2022 National 5 Paper 2. Three back question for solving this equation involving a trigonometrical expression. A sine in this case. Well, you still, you still solve it exactly the same way. You want to get down to x. So you're going to have to get rid of three things here in the correct order. If you were starting with x and you wanted to evaluate this, then what you would do is you'd find the sine of it, you'd multiply it by three, then you'd add on four. So to get back to x, you'll have to undo them in the reverse order. You'll have to take away the 4, divide by the 3, and finally do inverse sine. So those are the stages. So the first stage would be you've got 3 sine x. It's a pest right now, a wee degree sine in. You won't get penalised if you don't, because they realise it's a wee pest. Will be 6, take away the 4. You don't need to show this line. You could just go in with this one. So that 3 sine x is 2. You could have gone straight to there. And then, find, now, not finally, now divide by that 3, so you get down to 2 thirds. At that point, you get the first mark. Because that's you finished the easy bit of solving the equation. Now you've got to find this x. So that x will be, I think I'll still put that x degrees there, inverse sine of 2 thirds. Now, there's no mark for doing that yet. Now, you could work out 2 thirds. If you do work out two-thirds, which I'm not going to, but you know what the answer is, 0 0.666 forever, don't put down a value that's rounded off too much. Usually you have three decimal places when you put it down. So if you did want to put that down, put down at least 0 0.667. I know in the marketing scheme it says at least two, but it should really be at least three. But you don't need to do that because you can just keep that exact and just put that into your calculator to get the acute angle that will be related to the answers you require. So you type that in and you get an answer of, I'll put a note of it here, 41.81 and so on. Now, that's the acute angle. That may or may not be one of the two answers you're going to have here. So what you say now is you'll make up your little table, all sine, tan, cos. And since the sine is positive, it means you'll either be here that's where that acute angle will be. Or well, the other place the sine is positive is here. Whoops. So that's where the angle will be, meaning that these are the two angles. This angle, let's remember that's 0 and that's 180. From 0 up, so that is the 41.8. Or well, this angle all the way around, which is 41.8 short. So finally I can write x equals. Now, x itself is just a number because the degree sign's already there. So you could either write x degrees equals so many degrees, or just write this out without the degree signs. So one answer will be just what it says here, 41.8. Whoops. And the other one will be 180 minus that. Now, I don't really need to do 180 minus the whole lot and then round it off, because that calculation doesn't involve another number that's been rounded off. There'll be no rounding errors since that's exact. So I can just go in with 41.8 here. If I want my answer to one decimal place, normally you'd work to two decimal places. I don't need to here because this was an exact figure. So now I've got my two answers. I've got 41.8, or I've got, and you could just put that into your calculator if you like, but that's going to be 138.2. Now one mark was for getting that intermediate acute angle the one that came out of the inverse sine. And the other mark is for then finding the two appropriate angles within that range. Now, instead of using that diagram, the other way you could have done it is to say this. Well, it's a sine curve. And as that goes from 0 to 360, it'll go through most values twice. Well, apart from the 1, which will only go through once, and the minus 1, which will only go through once, and the 0, which will go through three times. But for this answer of two-thirds, which is up here somewhere, these are the two answers. And that's symmetrical. So whatever number, whatever angle that is, that'll be the same angle back from the halfway, back from the 180, which is what this little mnemonic here shows you. But that's why it actually happens. It took 42 degrees to get there. So we'll get back to there when there's still 42 degrees left to get back down to the start again, or back down to zero again, I should say. Number 10 then, there's that other type of circles question. 
You've got the type of circle question where you've got a calculation involving a straight line joining two points in circumference, that is a chord, in which case you have to use Pythagoras or trigonometry. And you've got this type of circle question where you've got a circle cut by two radii, so it forms a sector rather than a segment in the case of a chord. And the thing about this type of question is, it all just goes by fractions. You just need to know what fraction of a circle is that, because that's the same fraction that you'll have of the angle and the arc and the area. Well, what does it say? An attraction at a theme park has a carriage attach attached to an arm of length 15 metres, and it swings about through this major arc, the major arc being the long way round between the two points, rather than the short way round. Of course, the minor arc would be the sort of exciting part, I suppose, but it doesn't want you to do that because it wants you to work out a reflex angle. So through this major arc, so you've got a reflex angle, an angle more than 180, and you've just to work out the size of that. What's the size of this reflex angle here? Well, it all goes by fractions. What fraction of a circle have you got? Whenever you've got this swept out picture of a circle, Whatever you've got this situation where it's like a windscreen wiper, it's all just about what fraction is there there. What's the fraction of the circle? Well, the fraction you've got is the same fraction that the angle is of the total angle, which is 360 degrees. It's the same fraction that the arc is of the total arc, which is the circumference, which will be pi d or 2 pi r. It's the same fraction that the area of the sector is of the total area, which is pi r squared. Those three fractions are the same, and they're all specifically equal to the fraction of the circle. So it's just a case of what do you want to work out and what information have you got. It's the same situation you have when you use the sine rule. You know, a over sine a, b over sine b, c over sine c. Now, that's not the sine rule, obviously, but it's the same situation because you've got three fractions to choose from. And the two that you choose, because you can only use two of them, will be, you have to use the one that contains whatever it is you're trying to work out. So if you have to work out the angle, I've got to use this one. And the other one that you'll choose is the one where you know both parts. Well, I know the arc, so I know both parts here because I know the radius. You're always going to know all these denominators. So that's the pair I'm going to use then. So I'm just going to write that down. Angle, well, I know its name, ACB. So, ACB over 360 will be equal to the arc, which is 69.4, divided by the calculation for the complete arc for the circumference, which is pi d, which is pi times, now notice that's 15, so that'll be 30. Now, now I'm not quite following the marking scheme here, because it says something along, first of all, for method one, get an expression for the arc length as if there's some sort of rote method where you always put arc equals fraction of angle times circumference. Even if that's not what you want to know, then you just rearrange it to what you want. So I'm not going to follow that here. I'm just because the obvious thing to do here is fractions. You equate whichever pair of fractions is appropriate to the question. The fraction of the angle, the fraction of the arc. So there it's there. And also, at the same time, you could put them down either way around. You might as well put down the one that contains the part you want over here on the left. So I've put the angle first. If I was working at an arc, I'd put those down the other way around. Put that down first. But anyway, there's the first mark. Now you just rearrange it. Now you're just back to the, the marking scheme for the second part. They call it method one and method two, but essentially it's just write down the fractions. So that'll be just take that across. 69.4 over pi, and leave pi alone times 360, because it's nice and accurate there. There's no point introducing inaccuracies unnecessarily and then worrying about rounding off appropriately. Now, rearranging it to read angle, get some arc, and then it's just press the buttons for your answer. So, pressing the buttons gives you 265.08 and so on. And then, appropriately, I would say just take it to the nearest degrees, 265 degrees for the final mark for the reflex angle ACB.